Okay, you can see we got the vapor barrier all laid out here and taped down. Any seams were taped and uh, acoustic sealant all around the perimeter. Every so often I'll run the acoustic sealant right into the wall and then down between the flooring and the sheetrock to just block any drafts that way. Shouldn't be any, but um, we do have a drain here on the floor. It's actually not a drain, it's a clean out. But uh, we'll have to remember that when we insulate and board and floor over this. And um, yeah, so that's our update for now. Okay, so we're out in front of the, uh, we're outside with the table saw here and we've got our dado blade in the saw and of course as described earlier it's wider it's multiple blades stacked together and i've got the fence set at 12 inches out from the blade i've already done several passes through all these with six inches out and it leaves it cuts this groove and this groove and now with the center cut the as as uh, set up right there it'll cut through the center so you really it's as simple it's nice to have a partner but it's as simple as running it through the saw like that to do a rip cut and then when that's done, and all your lengthwise cuts are done, take the fence off all the way. And I'm gonna be running it over like that. I'm just gonna randomly go across every, oh, I'll do five cuts per, per sheet. And uh, you only want the saw up, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, you'd want a trail, but not much more than that. So that's how I've been cutting all of these sheets. So we've got several sheets of the foam insulation laid out. Ideally you would uh, butt up all of your tongue and groove. There's really no reason why you can't butt them all up together. And on the ends you ideally would not stagger, sorry, you would stagger the, the ends. So I've got them fairly aligned there. That's not optimal. You'd prefer to have a six inch gap in each of your each of your ends, so I'll probably take this one and cut it off here just so it's not aligned. That just gives the floor more stability when you put the OSB on top of it. You don't have seams in, the, in a common place. So we're going to continue running the foam insulation all the way to that wall, and after we get there, we're going to put the OSB down on this section. Then we'll put the flooring down. You definitely want to be wearing hearing protection and eye protection for this part of the job. When I do my the drill the holes, I drill them in, oh, three inches, four inches this way, three inches, four inches that way and then like every couple of feet along the perimeter and then a few down the center. Okay, and unless you have hands made of steel, you want gloves before pounding these nails in. You want gloves on for sure. You go down that far before they touch the concrete. Now you gotta pound them hard in. Now, a couple things to watch out for. Near the edge of a board like this, like by pounding that down, I wanted to make that kind of below the surface of the wood or flush with the surface of the wood. But it might be hard to see in the camera, but I think I dented the styrofoam just in this corner right here. Not overly worried about it, but just exercise caution when you're around the perimeter of a board or of a piece of OSB. Now, I'm just using this remnant up here so there's no tongue. And, uh, but there is a tongue on this sheet. The thing I learned the hard way was I put a sheet down, I nailed it all the way around the perimeter in the center. I went to slide a second sheet in and engage the tongue and groove and I couldn't get it to go in and I didn't know why. Well it's because when I nailed down this edge all along here I drove it down really tight to the styrofoam and it made it hard to engage this new piece of OSB. So after I did that the first time I learned not to nail this edge until I've already got another sheet of OSB locked in with the tongue and groove. So a few little tips there for you. Basically you go along with your vapor barrier, foam, OSB till you do the whole room and then you can start the flooring. So here we are a couple hours later we've got all the OSB down and uh, we had a heck of a time with some of the nails. Um, they wouldn't, they bent right and so you end up with this right here where it doesn't go in straight and now you've kind of chewed up some of the wood but there's still some grip there. Um, also we had some of the nail heads pop off. Not desirable but anyway we just drilled another hole right beside it and 
drove a nail in. Uh, a couple of tricks when dealing with tongue and groove. It's sometimes difficult to get the, the, the tongue and groove to come together. They never fully come together so that there's no gap. You have to have some gap there just the way it's designed. But if you can get it in one end but not the other, what we did was we got it in one end, then put one nail in, and then we come down to this end and pound it. And that nail we put in held, held that end so that we could drive this in. And then when we would do that, it would engage the tongue and groove the whole way. The other challenge we had was like areas like this where there's, there are two sheets that go into one sheet. When we were putting this sheet in like this, maybe this and this were not at the same height. Maybe one was slightly higher than the other. So we would tap along here with a hammer to just kind of, as we were driving this in, we'd dry, pound on this and then give this a few taps. Pound on this, give this a few taps. And with that technique, we never really had to hammer on the tongue and groove too much and we could see that gap close up. Um, you know, towards the end of the project here, we're just using remnants to fill in and we ignored the tongue and groove concept. We just didn't have those kinds of remnants. When we did, we used them, but they were just pieces without necessarily tongue and groove. So we're gonna do a big vacuum, move the bed over out of the way and uh, pound the last of the nails in there along that bed right there. And then we'll start flooring. Okay, so the saga continues here. I'm uh, doing all right, got a few rows down. Working my way this way, of course, and I want to show you how this stuff gets cut. So first of all, you uh, you want to leave a gap between the flooring and the wall in case the flooring shifts or swells. You don't want it to cause a bubble because it backed up hard against the wall. Um, you also want to make sure that your flooring is going to be covered by your trim. So I've got a short piece of trim there. It's covered by, you know, eighth of an inch. That's great. That's enough. And um, so then it comes to, well, how do we cut this stuff? And I thought that you needed a special cutter, like a guillotine style cutter that, uh, you know, the kind you are likely to amputate your fingers with. Well, I thought you needed one of those to cut this. Um, and I also thought you could cut it with a miter saw. Turns out you don't need any of that. It, that's way over complicated. The way you uh, go to cut a piece is you, it's all tongue and groove on the ends. So, so it's important to make sure that you are aware of which end you are you want. So this, so how do we measure that? Well, you can take a tape measure and measure from here to the wall, less a quarter of an inch for the gap, and measure from here to here, and cut it. That's one. Of them. This is the way that it's going to be oriented because of the long male edge here and the long male edge here, female here, male there. So this is the way that it will be oriented. And I had it backwards a moment ago. This piece will get discarded from this row and go down to the other end. This is the piece that's to be installed. So when I cut it, it's like I take this and move it down and put it in place. So instead of measuring, you turn this board backwards, put it up to the wall, pull it, pull it back the amount you want to pull it back. Check it with your trim. Yep, good, good. There's enough gap there. Not too much gap. Trim's going to cover it. Line up the piece below with the new piece. You're going to take your straight edge. You're going to line your straight edge up with the piece right below it, the finished edge of the piece below. You're going to watch it, don't chop your fingers off. You're going to score this a few times. Now, a little tip with this kind of knife and this kind of cutting, I'm holding it with my thumb here. If the knife's going to slip, try to bias the knife to slip this way instead of towards your hand, okay? So, you see I've scored that a few times. And watch what happens here when we do this. Where I've scored that, I'm going to take it, it's going to bend right there, and there you go. You make sure that the track is all clean everywhere. A little speck of dust will cause this to not sit properly, by the way. Slide it in there. That's it. That piece is installed and cut to fit, so there's no gap here. And there's the right amount of gap there. I'm going to give it a quick check. Ta -da! So that's how you cut this stuff. Very easy. Okay, so here we are, the final video. I got the floor done in one bedroom, all in the closet and around the corners, trim baseboard all on. I do have this area right here to address this step, and I'm going to do something with like a little 45 degree piece of uh, hardwood or something on an angle and then put a, it's called a slim trim. Uh, over this and the, the new piece of hardwood I'm going to put there, but that's uh, pretty minor compared to the overall scope of the project. All the baseboard trim is back on. I have another one of those lower floor level 
adjustment exercises that needs to be done here with this 45 degree. I know it's not optimal to have that kind of a step in the middle of a floor. What do you do? I want to build the floor up. I'm not going to lift the house. I'm not going to take that door out and reset it higher. In fact, I'm not even sure if it can be done. There might be a header over there that's too tall. You'd have to chip the header away or get a custom door made. So I'm not doing that. And I'm also not going to reset all those stair treads. There's probably thousand bucks worth of stair treads right there. I'm not going to tear up and try and reset each one for the different rise. You know, it's just not worth it. So uh, I'm sure there are other ways and people can talk about it being a tripping hazard, but it's the way it's going to be. Um, got a room in here, all under the closets. There's another one of these step downs for the tile. I'm not going to do uh, the uh, the you know under the toilet and then bring, raise the sink up and all that stuff either. Here's the last room, bedroom. So you can see there's quite a quite a bit of flooring put down. The project was a huge success. Uh, it took me about ten days of like eight nine hour days to do the foam, do the, the vapor barrier, the foam. Uh, the OSB, all the flooring, take up all the trim, repaint it, and reinstall the trim. I also had to repair a wall when uh, the dumbbell rack fell over <laughs> and all the dumbbells smashed through the sheetrock, so I had to repair a wall. And I uh, also uh, did a couple other little things beyond the flooring, so it took about 10 days. But yeah, so if you thought this video was helpful and you like the kinds of work that I do, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Good luck with your do it yourself.